action. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see everyone this morning. So uh, let's all stand. Go to the Lord of Worship this morning.
Sorry, I said do that. Yeah. That was Tim doing that finale at the end of that song. Remember that? Tim and Tim. I mean, that was TJ and Reagan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full armor of God, so that you may, able, may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything, to take your stand. First, um, Apostle Paul, John, Peter, Matthew, all the disciples, um, all the Old Testament prophets, all believed that Satan is real. That there is a real, he is a real entity, he is a real person, he is not just this um, generalization of bad things, but he is a living entity. Now about 15 or 20 years ago, I, I looked, I had a, a poll. This was by the Barna Group. They they asked sixty or they asked a thousand people um, whether they agreed that Satan is not a living being but is a symbol of evil, and sixty two percent agreed with the statement. Sixty two percent didn't believe that Satan is a living entity, but just um, just a symbol of evil. Now, according to the scriptures, that's that's not the case, and I don't I don't go I don't base my beliefs on popular opinion. Amen. Amen. I go by what God says. Now, God, even in this passage, stand up against the tactics of the devil. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, last week I mentioned um, the the first thing because right now we're in a spiritual battle. It's it's happening now. We're it's not going to start this week. I mean, it has started really years ago. And, but like, it's at the point now, it's getting really bad. And I, I think it's point, it's uh, extremely important that we uh, discuss this today. So the first thing is, is that your salvation. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, shout amen. 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 Now, your salvation is not in question. It's not up for negotiation or anything. You believe in him, nothing's going to change that. Because I guarantee you, the first time... You go into a spiritual battle, and the first thing that you're going to hear, either from Satan himself, whispering in your ear, or the person you're talking to is, you're not really saved. You're not really a Christian. You know, you'll, you'll get that. I tell, you, I tell you that's the truth, because this happened to me. That happens to me, too. But that is not, that is not in question. Remember that. And you have to know who you are in Christ before you go out into this world and try to challenge these evil tactics that are taking place all around us. Know who you are. Amen? amen. So that if somebody says, if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, shout amen, you do it. Just like you already did, right? Okay. Now, so that's that. And last week we talked about this. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. So, Right to the next point. See how quickly this goes? Because this is part of the Super Summer Sermon Series. Where the sermons are shorter but hotter. Now, he says in verse 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. I want to emphasize today that we need the full part of the armor. That's what we're going to stress. We're not actually going to talk about the armor today, but we um, put on the full armor of God. That's real important. We need to have all of it. Have all the bases covered. You wouldn't go into battle if you didn't have all your battle gear, would you? You wouldn't just go into battle with a pocket knife, right? Now,
Wait a minute. Because sometimes we're dealing with the devil and sometimes we're dealing with people. People are, a lot of people are evil, right? Um, so a mom was scolding her daughter because she kicked her brother in the shins and pulled his hair. And her mom said to her, why did you let the devil convince you to kick your brother in the shins and pull his hair? She said, well, the devil got me to kick him in the shins, but it was my idea to pull his hair. <laughs> All right, now, because here's the thing. Here's the truth. Now, last time I preached this, I preached this about five years ago. Last time I preached this, I emphasized that the devil's not in everything. You know, every time something bad happens, we oh, the devil did that. You, uh, how many remember uh, the movie The Water Boy? Yeah, because you remember what Bobby Boucher's mom said to Bobby Boucher about the foosball. The foosball's got the devil in it, Bobby Boucher. Remember that? And then... Vicky Valancourt, that girl. Then mama told him that girl got the devil in her, Bobby Boucher. Right, so anything his mom didn't like, he, she, that's got the devil in it, right? That, that, that's not the case. How many of you remember uh, Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live back when Saturday Night Live was funny? Um, remember he'd do the church lady and she'd say, you know, no matter what it was, she'd say, Satan? Remember that? Yeah. Right. And, you know, uh, now, look, that, so that was kind of a joke, right? It's, it's not a joke anymore. It's not, it's not a joke. When, when I look around at, and what people are doing and things that are happening, I'm thinking, that, that's the devil working. And these, these things are happening because the devil is influencing people. So w when we think about this and we consider spiritual warfare and the fact that we're dealing against, we're dealing with the devil and his minions. Um, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm not going to keep on my notes, so I won't miss nothing. So, the, the thing is, the, the tactics of the devil and his systematic attacks are real. And he, in this passage here, he even talks about the complexity of this operation that he's got going on. And look, if the devil can't steal your soul, he don't, he don't have any opportunity to get your soul when you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, right? He don't have that. That's not an option. So he will do everything he can to either take the joy out of your Christian life, take the joy out of your salvation, or he's going to render you useless by, by making you doubt and have anxieties about everything, you know, like I said already, well, like you're not really saved or, you know, whatever that might be, or you don't really have enough faith for this, whatever it is, the devil is going to do everything he can to try to make you useless if he can't steal your soul. Verse 12 says, for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Now, scriptures don't tell us exactly what all the devil's operations are. But we can see from this passage here that there are, there's a systematic approach to his tactics. And, and he has been doing this a long time. He's been doing this longer than I've been preaching. All right? Just, I mean, you have to take that in consideration. He knows what he's doing. Now, when we look, there are battles against the rulers, against the authorities, against world powers of this darkness, against spiritual forces in, in heavenly places, in the heavens. There's spiritual forces there that, and he's working in all of those to, well, do all the evil stuff. Rulers, authorities, world powers of this darkness, spiritual forces of evil in the heavens, all that stuff. Now, uh, the devil is actively and effectively working in every level. Now listen to me. Listen real close. Pay, pay attention to this specifically. Listen. The devil is actively working and effectively working in every level of media, social media, every level of education, every level of government, and in both political parties. Don't tell me that you're with one party because they're right and the other party's wrong. Both parties 
the devil is operating in both of them. In our government and everything below our government, the devil has got his fingers in everywhere. So the first question I want to ask you, something for you to think about. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, because before I get into that, I want to show you something else. Uh, well, I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to tell you. Um, Ephesians 2, now same book, Ephesians. If you go back to chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, uh, he talks about this to, to the people that lived at Ephesus, and this is what he said. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you previously walked, according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercises authority over the lower heavens, the spirit now working in the disobedient. The people that are disobedient have a spirit that's working in them that is not from God. You hear that? Now that, and that's in the scripture. That's in Ephesians 2, verse 2. Well, I think it's 1 and 2. But I'm, 2 is the one where he says that that spirit is working. Now look, I'm telling you this stuff because I can't believe what's happening. I mean, I cannot believe. 20 years ago when I got into the ministry, I never would have dreamed that I would be writing out religious exemption for an emergency use vaccine. That is insane. It's crazy. It's crazy that our politicians would be putting that on us. So let me ask you this. Of our, what percentage, now this is your opinion. I'm, I'm asking your opinion. Now I know that we can't judge the hearts of people, but let me just ask you as a general, just think in your own mind, what percentage of our politicians do you think are genuine born again Christians. I'm seeing zero, one, ten, zero to one percent. Now, now I'm not talking about. Remember, that's both parties. The one party's not right, and the other party's not wrong. They're both they're both crooked as could be. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah. I'll tell you something. I voted I voted Republican my whole life. I voted Republican for one specific reason. Because, well, look, I like lower taxes, right? Doesn't everybody like lower taxes? Yes. Right? Well, but the reason that I voted Republican was one thing. Abortion. Abortion. A sanctity of life. And I had how many oh, Republicans all my life? Yeah, I'm a little irritated about this. Because Republicans all my life have said that they're pro-life. You know what? We had a pandemic last year. Everything shut down except abortions. That's evil. There's evil operating in our country. And I'm irritated. That's right. Tell me. Lie to me. Lie to me for 20 or 30 years, however long I've been voting. They did nothing. They've done nothing to slow it down or even prevent it. Oh, wait. After Clinton made partial birth abortions legal back in the 90s, the next Republican president stopped partial birth abortion. That means a baby's half born and they kill it. My God, how can these people live? How do they live with themselves? It's irritating to me, irritating. And then we've got a country that gave a false judgment that said that a woman has a right to kill her baby in the womb. That was a bad judgment by a bad court in a bad place. And that's wrong and it needs to be overturned. Amen. But I'm telling you, we're not going that direction. We're going the other direction. That's right. Now listen to this. Listen to what I'm telling you here. Because this stuff, for one, this was reported. I have this information here. Oh, wait. Next question. First question was percentage of politicians you think are saved. And you guys all have very low opinion. I do too, by the way. So, what percentage of politicians do you think believe that the world is overpopulated. This is a little more tricky because they don't talk about it so much. I'm telling you what. I'm righteous. I, I'm, I'm angry with the righteous anger. I, I'm so irritated about so much stuff. 
Look, and if you don't see, if, if I'm talking and, and you think this is crazy, you really need to check your discernment. Because I'm telling you, this stuff is evil. There's so much evil going on. September 13th, 2019, this article appeared in the Orange County Register. And this is a quote from that article. This is not my opinion. This is what was said in the article. Recently, now this, um, this is what's written. Recently, when asked if he would act to curb population growth because the planet cannot sustain this growth, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders answered in the affirmative, noting he would focus on poor countries around the world to reduce population. Now, that's, that's Bernie Sanders, who is a senator right now in our government. Now wait, because there's the next paragraph. September 13th, 2019. Former Vice President Joe Biden one of Sanders' rivals and current leader, con leading contender for the Democratic na nomination, previously voiced acceptance of China's one child, now it's two child, says, the one child or two child policy, telling a Chinese audience this, in quotes, your policy has been one which I fully understand. I am not second guessing of one child per family. Now, those two I just mentioned are both in office right now. That this is not a conspiracy theory. These are the facts without speculation. But knowing this stuff, this stuff feeds conspiracy theories. This, this stuff does. A virus, listen now, because this stuff, you're not allowed to say on social media. They won't say it on television. They won't say, it, you're, you're not allowed to have, uh, I mean, the politicians will, you know, won't say it. Th these are the things that are not being spoken right now. There's, listen, a virus that caused a global pandemic originated in China, Chinese Communist Party, where you have to get a child permit if you want to have a baby. Where if you have more than two, you have to hide one because they will force an abortion. Mandate abortions. That's that's what Biden said. He has done second guess that. Now listen, because Those people believe there's there's so many. You, you think how many few uh, what, what the few percentages that are genuine Christians. Now think about how many of those that are not Christians have no godly conscience at all. They believe that the world is overpopulated. I'm not talking about Democrats or Republicans. I'm talking about Democrats and Republicans, both. There are two sides of the same coin, and both sides look the same. You know what's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican? I don't either. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Now, listen, because George Soros, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and many others, they've been indoctrinated by our government's higher learning program so that they believe also that the world is overpopulated, that this is a problem. The problem with the global warming and the climate change is us, the people. People are the problem. Now, you think about these ones. Now, you're not all talking about the Wuhan. You're not all talking about the Wuhan lab. Why not? Why aren't we investigating that? Why are we just going to wait until another variant pops up? Why? Why aren't we figuring out? Did they do it? Did they make this? I know scientists are saying this thing was manufactured. Others are saying it's natural. Well, let's find out. But they don't care. Because look, I'll tell you what, the Chinese Communist Party does not care that half a million Americans died of a virus that they sent over here. That, or, or if they didn't send it over, they lied about it until it got out. That's a fact. That's not even speculation. That's a fact. And then these people 
including Soros, Gates, Zuckerberg, whoever's running YouTube, any of them, Google, all of them, they're all in cahoots. They're all in the same, they all believe the same thing. Overpopulation. The American people are the biggest problem for that climate change stuff. Yeah, these people are operating this pandemic. Do you really care? Do you really think they care if we die? Because I have some other information to show you. Because I really don't think they care if we die. Now, the, um, the lying news, they lie. They've got the devil in them. They do, what, they do what the devil wants them to do, and the devil is the father of lies. Chris and I, you can ask her, she'll tell you the same thing. Just a couple weeks ago, I said, we watch morning news. It's as much, it's as, much as I can stand. Just see what the propaganda is for the day. And, of course, they're talking about, oh, cases are up. Oh, hospitalizations. Hospitalizations and cases. Never mentioned anything else. And I told Chris, after a few days of this, I said, you know, they, aren't even, they haven't mentioned how many have died from the virus. Last year, if you remember last year, they were exaggerating how many died. So if there was, if there were, if there were 20 that died, I mean they were saying on the news there were 30 that died yesterday, and they were doing that consistently. I was checking. This is Ohio Department of Health website. This is this morning. This isn't like last week or last month. This is this morning. This is what's reported this morning. And um, they didn't mention. Um, well, they, they would mention ICU, but they didn't mention deaths at all. And, and I said, I said, you notice that? So I went and looked. Now, here's, this is the facts. For the last two months, the last two months, the deaths have been single digits from COVID. Single digits. Like six or seven, maybe eight. Well, that's bad. We don't want eight people. Out of the 11 million that live in Ohio, Eight people died from the virus. That's bad, but last year, April 29th, last year, 64 people in Ohio died of the virus. Last year. That, it was bad then. Now we've got people vaccinated, things. This, this is no longer, this is not a, this is not an emergency. But, but they're pushing. And they're pushing this vaccination, which, look, I'm not against vaccines. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Have not been but this is so sketchy and they're being so sketchy about this vaccine I, I'm, I'm nervous about this now look I know that a lot of people have already got it right because I'm telling you and I think it's a good thing when you've got the, when when you're at high risk as many are that's because you're targeted the virus was targeted for you for the people that are diabetic or over a certain age they we knew that Beginning of last year, we knew that. Those people are high risk, right? You guys knew that, right? Right. So, that, but now that this has happened, I got a couple other numbers for you just for comparison so you can compare. Um, in 2016, the number of people that died from, from cancer in Ohio, just Ohio. I'm only talking about Ohio. People that died from cancer in 2016, Came out to 70 per day about the cancer. That's bad. Um, so far this year, I checked, you appreciate this, Jack. I checked I, the Ohio State Highway Patrol to see what their statistics were for the number of fatal traffic accidents. It's up 89 this year from last year. To date, to date, about four people a day have died from car accidents. In Ohio, just Ohio. This, this, seven, that's the 21-day reported average. So for three weeks, the average has been seven. That means some were less, some were more. Is this, I mean... Am I wrong? Is this still an emergency? 
Does this look like a um, Now, let me share with some. Now, um, how, is anybody being threatened to lose their job if they don't get the vaccination? Three? Maybe? You don't know yet? I know George is. George is? Yeah. Okay, well, I have religious exemptions up here for people of our church. Um, now, look, I like I said, I'm not against vaccines. But this, this is uh, sketchy to say the best. Now, Chris, and Danielle, and George, possibly George, um, they're gonna be fired if they don't take an emergency use, emergency approved vaccination. It hasn't been tested, it's only been out six months. You know how long other vaccines have been out before they're being mandated. If you don't get it, you lose your job. Here's what happens. The government puts the government puts regulations on the medical industry so that if if they don't fire their employees if they don't get it, they, they're going to be stuck with whatever happens. Um, whatever it is, the government's passed this out and now these governments are, are well, they'll cut their funding to the different medical places. And okay now Look, there's so much that, and they're talking about, we're going to stop the disinformation. That means they're going to push their narrative. They're going to push their lies. And if somebody comes up and says something beyond these lies and tells the truth, right. So I know another nurse, she's not here, she's not part of our church, and you guys don't know her. Um, she works on the COVID floor at Mount Carmel. And I know Danielle has patients. And I, I'm not giving any details on anything, but um, on the news, they've reported multiple times. Chris saw it too, so I'm not seeing this by myself. 100% um, of the people in ICU are non-vaccinated COVID people. That's a, that is a flat lie. Now, I, I heard it plainly. I said, Chris, did you hear that? Because we both know People that work in that in the industry, uh, so the southern nurse I talked to, she said most all her almost all her patients have had the vaccine that are in the hospital right now with COVID. And I talked to her this past week, and this is what she said: I have to be careful who I talk to. I can't say anything. I can't say that I'm, I'm vaccination. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were in America. I thought you could have a free and open exchange of ideas and comments. And if something's sketchy, you can point it out. Oh, no, don't point out that. That's too sketchy. Don't look there. It's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. I'm losing my mind. Yeah. I, I really am. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I'm thinking it's just crazy. Now, Oh, all right, I got all that, got all that. I gotta wrap this up. Yeah, summer. This is summer, super summer, summer series. <laughs> all right, now look, the, so like I said, the 100% of hospitalizations were non-vaxxed. That was a flat out lie. And they, they repeated that multiple times. And the politicians know the truth about all this stuff and that is why there are conspiracy questions. So then you have somebody like a Republican, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who says this. Says, if you don't get the facts, you're a schmuck. I don't know if you're allowed to say schmuck in church. But that's what Arnold Schwarzenegger said. And then he said, screw your freedom. I don't know if you're allowed to say that either in church. But that's what was said. Yeah. Communists always say that. Because listen, because this is what's happening in New York City. De Blasio said this. If you want to participate in our, in our society fully, you've got to get vaccinated. It's time, he said. If you have to show that you're vaccinated before you go to restaurants or to go to shows. What, no? Yeah? Huh? 
1942. Now, that, and that's a Republican and a Democrat, because I'm telling you, they're all crooked. Life, liberty, the vax, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm going to have to rewrite the Constitution on this. Now, so I'm going to say again that every bad thing that happens shouldn't be credited to the evil one. But I'm telling you what, there's so much evil going on right now. And, and seriously, the fact that half a million Americans have died from this, and they're not even looking why this happened. Oh, we got another variant. And then we have this nonsense going on. That's, so eight people are in the ICU, average. That's average over 21 days in all of Ohio. I have 11 million people. And so we need to give up our, all of our freedoms and, or else we're schmucks. I'm going to go ahead and take the schmuck avenue. Listen, politicians, now I got this from, I adapted this from John chapter 8, verses 30, verse 38. When Jesus is referring to his opponents, he's at, that, now I'm going to attach this to our politicians. But politicians are doing the things they heard from their father, the devil. Jesus says in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has not stood in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of liars. So when they're lying, they're doing what the devil wants them to do. And I'm telling you, the lies come out. They flow freely. And, they're, and, they're, and it's crazy. So here's what, here's what we would like for you to do. One of the things I'd like to ask you to do. There is a... Um, we have... We have uh, did you take that other paper again? Danielle asked last week about this. Um, uh, well, a couple weeks ago, I had I, a sermon similar to this, and somebody said, well, that's good. What are we supposed to do? Here's the thing right now. Here's what we got to do right now. You need to take a stand, not be quiet about this. And look, and it's going to be unpopular because, uh, like I mentioned, all those outlets out there are against us and against this, and they're in favor of doing what the devil wants. So, look. Here's what we got. These are our Ohio representatives around the area of our church. And there's the address for them, their phone number. And you can see on this paper, I only printed like 10 of these. But you can see the ones, these are the ones right around our area. So from Groveport, um, the Groveport area is uh, Richard D. Brown. House District 20. That's Groveport and uh, on up to Gehanna. Now, Jeff Larray, he covers mo pretty much from Millersport to Lancaster to uh, over here near us, north of us. And then Brian Stewart is down here around below us. All right, so these are your. You can look at this and you can see which one is your representative and would like to ask you to send them a letter to say stop the vaccine mandates and the mask mandates. But I'm, So I've, I did all the legwork for you. They're having a meeting on, what's it? August 24th. Yeah, I had that on that other paper. I don't know where it is. August 24th is they're having another committee meeting. I've, I've seen some of the testimonies before this committee before and it it's sickening to think that they're going to fire nurses. The nurses that were on the front line last year, that we were praising as heroes, they're going to fire them if they don't get the vaccine. The vaccine that they didn't have when they were taking care of COVID patients all last year. Now they're going to fire them if they don't get it. And there's so much information about, that, so much lying about the vaccine, I don't know what it does or doesn't do anymore. I don't know. I, I just can't tell you. I don't know. Apparently, if you have it, there's a 
good chance you will not get as sick with COVID if you get COVID again. Oh, right, here's a big one. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Uh, so, but anyways, this has that information about that meeting. But we'd like for you to contact your representatives. This is something you can do. It's time to take a stand. It tells us in the scriptures. Oops. Well, I'm just going to click it. Look, this is why you must take the full armor of God so that you may be able, be able to resist in the evil day and have you prepared everything to take your stand. You see what I'm saying? If you understand what I'm saying, say amen. Amen. Okay. Now, because uh, look, what there's a whole lot of people out there that, that say that they're Christians and they think that they're Christians because they post a Jesus thing on Facebook. And they really need to know what the truth is. And you can't tell it on Facebook. If you do, they, they'll take you off. I know a lot of friends that have been in Facebook jail. Now, I, I haven't been in Facebook jail, but Facebook did warn me that my, my posts will not be distributed as much because I, well, that was because I shared the doctor that said hydroxychloroquine worked. And um, ends up that's true, it does work. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's time to take a stand because we are God's army, right? Right. Here's what we're going to do. Instead of singing, um, this would be fun. I'm going to sing a song again. Isn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the. Uh, <coughs> don't, don't start clapping my way. This is kind of fast. I don't want you to get tired of clapping before the end. But, um. <laughs> Because uh, we are a blood-bought church. Christ paid for us. He bought me. And here's the thing. We are God's army. We are His. We are the front line. And we, as sometimes we need to be reminded of that. And that we're, we're not in... Um, we're in hostile territory. That, that's what. <laughs> Sing for joy, they shall cry aloud and be free. They shall glorify the name of the Lord. It's the blood bought the church the redeemed. Hold oh, and up your hearts, O Zion and the Lord. Let the earth report with his praise. All the children rejoice from the islands of sea. For the blood bought the church the redeemed.
Oh, very. I think I have to stop this. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, Thank you. 